Today we will hear from Justin Elliott during Dynamo, a beginner's guide to automation. This presentation is being recorded and will be posted to the initial AEC YouTube channel following the webcast. A link to the webcast will be sent to all those who registered for this event. During the webcast, you may submit questions through the question panel on the GoToWebinar control panel or submit questions at the end during the Q&A. A PDF handout is available for you to download from the control panel as well, with links to the sample files that Justin will use during the presentation. Quick introduction to Initial AEC. We're an Autodesk Gold partner headquartered in Denver, Colorado, with a specialization in partnering with AEC firms. We offer on-site BIM management consulting for design teams, technical services for the management of your software assets, and end-user support to keep the design process running smoothly. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, or subscribe to us on the YouTube channel for all the latest updates. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Justin, and he'll begin the presentation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our uh, Dynamo webcast. So let's get started. Um, so our agenda today is to cover some of the... Um, the basics of Dynamo and, and the conceptual thought as to how we could start using Dynamo to automate um, some of our some of our tasks in Revit. Um, so first, we'll look at Dynamo. We'll look at the interface. We'll look at some graph management, and we'll look at a couple of very simple automation examples. Um, but before we get started, I'm gonna test out a poll on you guys. Let's see have can you guys see this poll? Have you ever used Dynamo? <clears throat> Just get a get a lay of the land, see who we've got with us today. So it looks like majority have never used Dynamo. We've got a 24% with a yes, less than 20 have maybe opened it once, and 6% doesn't, <laughs> what the heck is Dynamo? <laughs> All right, cool. Good to know. All right, so what is Dynamo? So I've got the Dynamo website up here, <clears throat> dynamobim.org. Dynamo is a free open source visual programming add-in for Revit. It's used to develop algorithms, scripts, graphs, processes to manipulate, manipulate your BIM data. Um, it can be used to automate tasks, query up information about the model, generate geometry, etc. This this really is uh, sky's the limit. The more you get familiar with Dynamo, the more creative you can get. You can start to uh, simplify some of your processes. So on their website, you can see they've got community-driven, open-source graphical programming for design. So there's a big community, a strong community behind Dynamo, um, where you can get a lot of help. And just a few of the examples on their website, people are using Dynamo to do anything, um, anything they can think of. So it's a very powerful tool, and we're going to cover some of the basics today just to get you familiar, just to get you, get you excited. Um, so let's, let's look at what Dynamo looks like in Revit. So, so in... So I've got Revit 2017 open here. Let's see if you guys let's see. Can you see that? All right. Um, in Revit 2017, you can access Dynamo through the Manage tab. It's under the Visual Programming um, panel. In earlier versions of Revit, it'll be under your Add-ins. So keep that in mind uh, if you go and start playing. Um, 2017 is in Manage. So whenever we open up power up Dynamo, just like most programs, we get a start screen. In the start screen, we've got the typical open, new, um, your recent files. But a couple of the things in here that I really want to point out is the Dynamo Primer. This Dynamo Primer reference is um, so helpful. It basically covers um, everything you can think about with Dynamo. And these guys have put it together for us. Um, so that we can learn and we can get better. And then there's also these samples down at the bottom. This is something that sometimes you just quickly overlook. But the samples are are really helpful just to 
just to open them up and see what they're doing, maybe explore a little bit of what some of these dynamo graphs um, can do just to see what the, the makers of dynamo um, are sharing with you here. So let's open up a graph here. Let's look at dynamo. So first off, we're going to look at the interface. You'll notice that in Dynamo, you've got your standard um, menu bar, your file, edit, your save, your open. You've also got packages, which is kind of special to Dynamo because, because it's open source, um, the Dynamo community creates extra content that you can download and add into Dynamo. And this is where you access that. Um, so that's, that's an important thing to note. Also on the menu bar, we've got a snapshot, which this is very helpful whenever you're trying to share a graph. What it does is it'll, it'll take an image of what you're seeing in the workspace and create a PNG for you, um, just so that it's easier for you to share these things. Um, <clears throat> so the workspace is this white space here in the middle. It's 2D, so you can pan and you can zoom. But then it's also 3D. You'll see behind there, we've got this button on the top right to switch over to our 3D preview. And if you can pan, you can zoom. If you right click, you can orbit. So if you're creating geometry using Dynamo, you can start to see it happen back behind your graph. Um, and with Dynamo, we've got an execution bar at the bottom. On the bottom left, we've got an option for automatic and manual. Um, so if you switch it over to manual, you have to manually run it. So you'll click left click there and run your, your Dynamo graph. And then the biggest thing is your library over on the left. You'll see all these different packages. Um, and you'll see some of these that I hover over actually say package on the right. Um, that means that I've downloaded those from the community, the Dynamo community. Um, and they're, they're very helpful. So free packages on the Dynamo community, they expand the capabilities of Dynamo. Um, for the most part, though, I would recommend using the out-of-the-box Dynamo nodes just to keep things simple. But occasionally you do need a, um, a special node that you just have to find and you have to download it. So, in the library, this is where all of your nodes live. Um, so if we were to go into the core library and click on the list category, we've got subcategories, nodes that create, nodes that um, complete actions, and nodes that query up information. Um, you can also, you'll notice that whenever you hover your mouse over one of these nodes, the name of these nodes, you also get this, uh, this preview of what it's looking for. So what does it do? Uh, what does it produce? What does it need to produce uh, the information? So it's very helpful. It's, uh, it tries to make this list, this library, not so daunting um, because it, there's a lot of stuff here, and it can get really overwhelming. Um, so whenever you click, you left click one of these, it adds it, adds it to your graph. Um, you can also, in the library, you can search. So if I were to type in list, that exact same node popped up. So I can click that and add it. I can also right click in the workspace and search. So you start to start to get a couple different ways that we can um, work in Dynamo. It's it's very much like AutoCAD or Revit, where there's a dozen different ways to to do the same thing. Really, it's just what works best for you um, and to make your job easier and faster. So um, that is a brief introduction to the library. Um, you can, you'll also notice that there's a Revit specific, and we'll cover that a little bit later.
but these nodes here in the library really expand the capabilities of what we can do in Revit. Um, and we'll, we'll cover that stuff at the end. So let's look at the anatomy of these nodes. So for some of you, this is totally um, a new concept as to, to working. Like, what the heck are we even doing? These nodes do specific things. Um, so for instance, this range node, if you hover over it, it says it creates a sequence of numbers or letters in a spe specified range. So we've got, if we hover over the node, we've got um, a quick, a brief introduction as to what it does. We've got the name at the top. We've got ports on the left and on the right. The ones on the left are input. So you'll connect and feed data into these ports. And depending on what kind of data you feed it, it will give you information on the right side. So the right ports are the out ports. And you also notice this little uh, this little icon here. This is a lacing icon. This is this is a um, a concept that was new to me uh, when I started using Dynamo. So we'll look at that um, here in a little bit. And you also at the bottom there's this preview. So whatever this um, node is doing, you can lock that preview and you can look and see what kind of information it's producing. So if we were to run this you'll see that this range is creating a sequence of numbers and we can look and when we hover over these ports it's got some default values not all nodes have default values but some of them do like this one so we get a default value of zero that's our start number and we've got our end number that's default value of nine and what are we stepping by stepping by a value of one and you can see that it's produced that information for us here um, also with nodes you can right click them and change your lacing. You can change some of the aspects, whether you're freezing it or previewing it, um, so on and so forth. So just like any other program, just play around and right click things and see what, see what kind of options you get. Um, so for nodes, in order to um, get information or get data rolling, we have to put some data into it. And the way we do that is we connect them. So for, if I wanted to connect this list to this range, I would left click that output and put it into an input. And one thing you'll learn and you'll notice is that you can basically output as many times as you want. You can only input into a port once. So you see how that sequence, see how those wires are working there? So it's something to keep <clears throat> keep in mind while you're working with Dynamo. Um, and that's part of the, um, the magic of Dynamo is that if you get a process, you can duplicate something on the out, output side. <clears throat> you can duplicate that process. Um, and also, you'll notice these things have different colors. So some of our nodes are going to be um, color-coded. You see this? This is kind of strange. Um, the ones that are light gray don't have any data. They don't have any information in them. The ones that are yellow and you'll encounter this, yellow ones are warning. So you're inputting some sort of bad data. It's not, the node doesn't know what to do with what you're feeding it. Um, and then, like we saw earlier, some of them are just dark gray. And when they're dark gray, that means that they're, they're getting information or they've got information and they're producing something. They've got something happening on the outboard side. Um, so it's very... It's, it's very user friendly in terms of color coding and like identifying where you might be having issues. <clears throat> so let's look at lacing real quick. Lacing is, uh, like I said earlier, is a concept that's new to me, but like the short idea of it is that it's how is the data being crossed? How is it being processed? 
So if we have a list of two numbers, one and two, and then we have another list of numbers one, two, three, and four, and we wanted to add those together, if we wanted to go with a short lacing, which you can see in the top right, it's just going to add one to one and two to two. So we'll get two and four as our output. If we did a long lacing, we'd get one plus one, two plus two, and then two plus three, and then two plus four. So it's going to continue on for that uh, total length of numbers. And then cross product will produce two lists. It'll do one plus all four of those numbers, and then two plus all four of those numbers, which you can see on the right there. So this is something that's a little bit of an advanced topic, but um, it's something that you will encounter, and you'll be wondering why <clears throat> numbers aren't um, crossing one another. You're not getting the full length of what you're, you're trying to get. So that is lacing. So Dynamo, what we've been trying to get at is that Dynamo requires data in order for it to really give you some something, you know, good in, good out kind of concept. Um, but data can be numbers, they can be integers, they can be strings, booleans, null, they can be lists or geometry, points, lines, etc. It's very massive. It can be practically anything. So the more you work with Dynamo, the more familiar you'll get with what you need to feed it in order to get <clears throat> the results that you're looking for. Um, so it's very can be very, very massive. And with that, um, Dynamo's given us uh, some ability to uh, keep it organized because with all these nodes and all this information and stuff and all these wires, it can get really, uh, really dirty or really messy quickly. Um, so they've given us the ability to select a number of nodes and right click into open space and we can align things. So we can just start to clean things up. You'll notice how these, when I select these and right click them, I can start to clean this up and get it, get it organized. And another thing that they've given us is the ability to create notes. <clears throat> so notes are important whenever you're developing um, dynamo graphs or processes because you may not be the only person uh, interacting with this graph. So you might need some instructions. So you might want some of this stuff at the beginning. Or you might, um, you might have time to work on this graph one day and then you may get busy and you may not have to work, might not have time to work on it for a month or so. So you can leave a note to yourself, um, this is where you left off, you know, just so that when you get back into it, uh, you can help yourself. It's just, just some graph management here. Um, along with this, they've also given us the ability to group things. So if we select a number of nodes, we can create a group. <clears throat> Which is very neat, very helpful too. Um, so, if we were to create a group, we can change the name. So maybe this is the output. Um, maybe this is the this is the input. And we can also color code these. So it might make sense to come up with a system of what does each color mean. So maybe this orange color is the output color. Maybe this input color, um, you know, across all of the graphs that you create, there's some system of knowing what is going on so that you can quickly look at it and see uh, what's happening, you know, or to refresh yourself when you get back into it. Um, so with all of this, how does Dynamo work with Revit. Um, we can look at, so one thing to note before we jump into one of these automation, these simple automation graphs, is that when you're working in Dynamo on top of Revit, it can be really easy to 
get Dynamo churning on a lot of data. So um, when it does that, occasionally Dynamo will freeze and it'll crash. And when it does that, it'll take Revit down with it. So you have to be careful with um, what your execution is. So if it's set on automatic or if it's set on manual, you don't accidentally create a whole bunch of uh, information being processed because it could crash and it could take Revit down. So just make sure you save Dynamo often and make sure you save your Revit model often. It's just good practice. Um, <clears throat> so let's look at um, this simple automation uh, graph we have here. So the concept behind automating or working in Dynamo is to think about think about the end at, at first. So what do I want to get out of this? So for this um, example, we want to create, say we want to create levels. We just want to automate how many levels are we going to create um, and let's Let's do that all at once. So what you do is you go through your library. You might search for levels, and you might find the level that you're looking, the node that you're looking for, and bring that in. <clears throat> and then we think, OK, so it needs an elevation. So maybe we want um, a sequence of numbers. So here we've got a range node. So it creates a sequence. So we're going to start it. What, what are we going to start at? A number, zero. So we're going to start the elevation. The first level is at zero. So what's our end elevation? So our upper, our maximum. So we've got 100 feet plugged in this. And then we've also got a step. So this might be the distance between levels, or floor to floor height. And it's helpful whenever you're creating things in, in Revit to just visualize them. So we've got a couple more nodes in here to just show what are we producing. So you can see that um, we created a bunch of lines here. We've got um, eight levels, 13 and a half feet spread out across 100 feet. So we can change that floor to floor height and run this again. Or we can change our upper limit to maybe it's Maybe it's not 100 feet. Maybe it's 75. Let's visualize this a little bit before we go in and, and push this information into Revit. So now, if we get it the way we want it to look, we can just connect that sequence of numbers into the level by elevation node. <clears throat> Which, let me back up. I can show you where the level by elevation is. So this is under the Revit library, under Elements. You just have to, to peruse this library and look and see what kind of stuff you can make. Um, so we've got the level by elevation here. So now if I run this, you'll see that it went through and created levels at those elevations. And it's given it Revit ID numbers. So that means that it's created an element. So if I minimize Dynamo and I go into a an elevation, you'll see that we just created all these levels just with a click of a button. Um, so this is a very simple process that you can use. Um, <clears throat> All right, so, all right, one second. I got a question here. Show us how you created the lines. So I take that you're probably talking about these preview lines. Um, so creating the lines. So the same thought process goes in, into this. So you think, OK, what do I need to to visualize this. Okay, so maybe I want some lines. So I can go into the library and I can look at, okay, so I want to create lines. So if I do a line, you can do start by end or by start point end point, or you can do start point direction length, so on and so forth. So what I've got here is start point direction length. So 
now I want to say, all right, so what does it need in order to create these lines? So it needs start points, it needs a direction, and it needs a length. So you can plug in a number for the length, you can plug in a vector for the direction. So in this case, we're doing just an x-axis. And then for the start point, we're just going to grab that from the range. So the sequence of numbers that we've created, we'll just plug that into the z input of the point by coordinates, and it'll create um, points at that z elevation. So now this line node knows where to start that line. <clears throat> Good question. Um, let's move on to the next example. So we just got two more examples real quick. So another thought process might be um, maybe I want to automate my grids. So in this graph, what we've done is we've worked backwards again. So we've started with um, the grid node, start point, end point. There's another, there's an, another grid node that's, I think, start and it's by line instead of end point by points. But we've used start point, end point, and we've basically worked backwards again. So we've created, we know that this needs start and end. So we need to go through and define um, an overall east-west dimension perhaps, north-south, and then divide that up so that it, we've got a bay spacing. <clears throat> so just very um, big picture, you know, this is something that you can use to um, just test out some ideas. We've got this much space, let's see what the bay spacing might be. How, can, how many bays can we get in here perhaps? Um, and we've also, we've done some visualizing here too before we start to create. So we've got this grid by start point and point. I don't have it fully connected because I don't want it to create the grids yet, <clears throat> but I'm visualizing it. I've got these visualize the grids, so these are just lines. So if I can, if I go in and change my overall dimensions, this is not on automatic, so switch over to automatic, and you can use a number slider to automate this. See how those those bays are changing? You can see our, our range of numbers. <clears throat> so with this, we can um, just visualize what we want. Maybe this is maybe this is good. We like this. We can connect these um, these final points. I'm gonna switch it back over to manual. and then run it. It's thinking. So there you go. You can see that the Dynamo's created grids with Revit IDs. So now if we go back to our floor plan, we can see that we've created grids at those points, um, at that spacing. Um, <clears throat> so that is a, a quick a quick and kind of dirty way to, to create grids. Um, and I'll share, all of this stuff will be shared with you guys so that you can look around and play with it yourself. Um, one last graph. So this graph is create, has been created to delete unplaced rooms, or rooms that shouldn't be in the model anymore. <clears throat> so this was, actually this idea came to us through Twitter. Um, somebody found it on Twitter and we're like, okay, cool, let's try and replicate that. Let's see if we can make that work. So I don't know if you've ever had the issue where um, rooms have been created in Revit and eventually they've been deleted. Um, <clears throat> so in your room schedule, you've got a whole bunch of not placed rooms. They're just muddying up your model. In this instance, in Dynamo, we can work backwards and say, I want to delete elements out of my model. So we'll start on the right side and say, 
I need a delete. So I go find the delete node, bring that in. So what do I want to delete? So that's the next question, right? I want to delete rooms. So on the left side, we've got categories. So these are all the different categories within Revit. We need all of the elements of that category so that Revit knows um, that we're looking at all of these elements, all of these IDs. So you can see here that we've got eight rooms in our model. And now we want to say, okay, which ones of these, which of these rooms doesn't have any area, right? So we can query up the information about these rooms and say, what is the parameter value of those rooms? So we can say the parameter name is area. We can say that the element are the rooms. And then we can look and see. We've got three rooms that have an area. And then we've got um, five more that don't. So now we can say, logically, which rooms equal nothing, essentially? So the first object is this list of rooms, the room areas. And the second object is nothing, so it's zero. So then that will give us a Boolean, which is a true or false, a one or zero, yes or no. So we can see here that the output of that is the first three elements are false. They've got areas. <clears throat> and the last five are true. It's true that these other five don't have any area. So now what we need to do is tell Revit or tell Dynamo that I want to filter this out based on true and false, essentially. So I can take my original list of rooms filter this by a boolean. So this is a common um, a common node that you'll encounter. So we're going to say this list of rooms, the first three are false, the bottom five are true. So what's the in and out here? So for the, the out, the in are the items whose index is true. So that's the bottom five rooms. The out are the index the items whose mask index is false. So those are the top three rooms, the ones that have areas. So now <clears throat> what we can do is we can just take this, um, the rooms that are true, they don't have any area, and delete them. We just connect that to the delete and click run. And then now if we go back to our Revit model, we'll see that in that room schedule, that just dummy room schedule, all of those rooms have been deleted. Um, so that's essentially that's what we've got for you here for um, just some quick examples, con conceptual examples of what you can automate. These are really simple. Um, there are examples out there where you can automate anything, really. Things that are challenging to you or things that are tedious or time consuming, you can go through and work out a dynamo graph to simplify that process or to at least um, just make it easier on you. Um, okay, so let's get to, we're getting, we're over on time, so let's kind of go back to our PowerPoint real quick. Um, so here is a quick list. There's 20 here. This is from an AU course, um, Everyday Dynamo. These are some handy out-of-the-box nodes. That's what OOTB stands for. These are just ones that uh, these presenters uh, encountered the most in their scripts. Um, so this just gives you a starting point because there's a lot of nodes out there, and if you start to automate stuff, you might might think about using some of these first. Maybe they solve your problems. Um, all right.
thank you all for joining. And uh, on behalf of our team at Initial AEC, we look forward to uh, hopefully working with you in the future and hearing from you and uh, hearing your thoughts on uh, Dynamo. <laughs>